Hi John, how are you? Morning. Um, last few days, actually getting your foot in the door being Ireland manager, how has it been? What you expected? Anything surprise you? No, no surprises thankfully. Um, obviously once you see the, the team doctor's uh, number ringing you, it can be uh, not good news but look what we only obviously lost out uh, Liam Scales and, and Troy from the original squad. Um, so that's obviously look a bit of a blow in the sense that the two lads are doing well at their clubs. Um, but uh, in general, what's happened over the last couple of days has been brilliant, as I expected. Um, the players have took everything on board, really enjoyed it, watching them with their intensity in training. And the details that myself, Paddy and Glenn in particular, I've been trying to get across to them to hopefully have a plan in place and to do the job against Belgium. Were you tempted to call others up to replace the two lads, or what's the thinking behind? No, look, that that was my thinking behind the initial squad was there was plenty of cover in terms of in each position, and uh, if we did lose one or two, we were going to be okay. Bearing in mind, um, Joe Hodge and Andy Moran as well joining up with the squad after after their game of the Twenty Ones. When you got the players together, did you, did you have a message for them? What did you say to them? No, look, we had a quick meeting in terms of um, our ideas of what we're looking for from the two games, and particularly the first game, Belgium, um, in terms of what we're going to look at in training, our ideas of our approach to how we're going to obviously stop Belgium and obviously try and create chances against Belgium and hurt them as well. So um, that was the main focus of it. But basically, to bring an energy to the to the week, to the camp that um, is really enjoyable and focused on a mentality of winning football, finding a way to win big matches. And if you can do that, I think um, as look as I said before, I think this group will uh, will really grow from strength to strength because they're quality quality players, quality people, and they're playing well at their clubs as well too. So um, it's uh, it's great to see. Tony, please. Hi John, how are you? Morning Tony, all good, thank you, and yourself? Good, thanks, yeah. Um, you're obviously a defender, so is Seamus, you want to get that mm. side of the, the house right to begin with. And yesterday, Jacob Bryan told us that uh, you were the player that he kind of looked up to when he was growing up. What can you tell him in particular, and uh, how likely is he to get a, get a start? Jake really wants to get in the team, Jake, doesn't he? He's telling you what, he's playing well so far. Um, no, look, as I think Jake mentioned himself the growth he's had in terms of his uh, football football and knowledge over the last year to 18 months has been fantastic. So, look, he's settled in well to the group. Um, the level he's playing at is really high, and uh, but obviously the competition we have, excuse me, um, in that area of the pitch is is very good. So, but just carry on with what he's doing. Really, he'll be very close to to being involved in both games, hopefully. And, um, as you mentioned, defensively, it'll be important in both games too because it's, it's top quality opposition. And at any level now, at international <clears throat> international games, you have to get the, the house in order in terms of clean sheets to give you the best chance of winning games. Have you thought about the shape of your defence though? Will you stick with three centre halves and wing backs? Or does it depend on the opposition or the personnel you have? Yeah, exactly that. Exactly what you said. It depends on the opposition and the personnel. Um, as I mentioned before, the players at the minute, if you look around, there's a good flexibility in terms of they're playing at three, in threes at the back and obviously back fours. And um, in terms of that's in possession, out possession, you can build in a three, but out of possession, you're a four. So big flexibility in the team and the squad in general. And uh, But no confirmation on anything on team shape yet. James, can I ask you, what's it like... Um being managed now by someone that you you, you played alongside, you know, very much the elder statesman with this group now. Yeah, listen, um, I don't want to sound like like Jake here now, trying to get in the team, but <laughs> um, I have to say, when I came in as a player, and and, and the manager was a player at the time, uh, he was someone that that we all looked up to for the simple things like the standards around the place, the respect he had for people around the place, and and that is something that you know I always remembered from being in the squad. It's something that I always tried to to carry through to, to the younger players as I got older as well. So I've um, got, got obviously massive respect for the manager and you know I'm delighted for him to get the opportunity because 
I know how proud he was every time to come in as a player, so I can't imagine how proud he is now to, to lead his uh, national team as a manager. So delighted for him, and you know, for me now, he's my manager, and that you know we were teammates, but that goes to the side, and I'm just doing all I can to 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 do what I can for the team and to impress the manager as best I can in, in the week that I'm here. Sky Sports. In the, in the, just one more. In the last number of um, years, even you could see the amount of players that had given their debut by Stephen Kenny. Um, but in the recent past, have have we missed your experience in leadership? Do you think? No, listen. I, listen. I always want to come and I want, want to play for Ireland and, and do the best I can. And you know, unfortunately, I missed the, the last year. And you know, it's great to see new players get opportunity. And you know. Um, that's what we want. We want to bring players through all the time. But of course, I've always wanted to be playing, always wanted to be part of it. But you know, you can't always be selected, and um, and you've got to respect that as well. And uh, when I play, to give it my all. But um, no, I think Stephen done well bringing through young players, and and that's what we're we're seeing here today as well with with the squad that we have. Anton, James, um, just how different does the camp feel this time around? Obviously, there's so much change. Now. Yeah, it feels different. It um, feels different more so for me. I've been away from it for a year and then coming in and, and there's a few kind of younger players in that I've not seen in that. So it's been good getting to, getting to know them all. But regarding the management staff, I, I personally have known quite a few of them. And like football, it changes all the time and we all get used to it very quickly. And the first couple of days in the training ground have been very good. The manager and his staff have been very intense with the detail and very good. And, and we've enjoyed it. It's been really good. So... Um, Fingers crossed we can have a, a good rest of the week and, and, and Saturday is what's important and friendlies or competitive games, it doesn't matter. See, when you put on that green shirt, I've always said it here in front of you guys, it's like a World Cup final every time because we're that proud to play for our country. You've obviously come over from Everton under an intense pressure cooker, I suppose, at the moment with the relegation and the effort that's going on behind the scenes as well. Is it nice to, to kind of get away from that for a bit? Ah yeah, listen, it's, it's not so much getting away from it as such. It's when I come here, I'm just so proud to be here when I'm over there. I'm fully invested in that too. Like so, um, I would never say it's nice getting away from it because that's what you know. I'm captain of the football club, and the pressure that's been is something that I take pride in trying to to get over. But yeah, it's been tough at the club. There's no getting away from that, and obviously it's great coming here to to meet up with the national team like always. How tough has it been? Well, listen, we 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 are where we are in the league. Everyone knows all the other stuff that's going around outside it, and you know. Ultimately, the position we're in is the position we're in now, and we've got ten games to to go in the league, and we've got to fully focus on what we can do as players on the pitch, what we can do as players in the dressing room to make sure that we stay together because we've been there for a couple of years now, unfortunately. And I'm a strong believer of that: the group that stays together the most and uh, sticks together, fights together, will will, will be okay. And uh, we've got to make sure that we have that focus for the next ten games. Gavin, please. Yeah, hi Seamus. Uh, welcome back. It's, I think it's been a year since you've been in. How hard is it watching on as Ireland captain at a qualifying group that you know, a series of narrow results and, and you know, a tough group but a very poor set of results in the end? Listen, it's always tough watching on and uh, obviously to see the team not doing so well is always very tough. You know, I've been there where I've been fit and been part of teams that aren't doing well so I know how it feels. It's tough and you know, it always hurts us when we play for a national team and it doesn't go to plan but you know, personally speaking, I was kind of tunnel vision towards uh, getting fit, working very, very hard to get fit because obviously it was a bit of a scare at the, the night of the Leicester game. I kind of maybe thought that could have been it because it looked to be a bad injury. But thankfully, somehow, as I said, you know, in the last couple of months, I got away without it being an ACL, which was important for me at my age and at the time. So um, I was just completely focused on getting back fit. And obviously, I watch the lads and care for the lads when I'm not here. but. I had full focus on, on trying to get back to, to play at this level. Yeah, and sorry to bring you back to that moment, but when you're being stretched off against Leicester, is that actually what you're thinking? When you're thinking, is, is this my career here? Well, yeah, I think I think maybe for the first time I did think that um, because, you know, I'm not obviously getting any younger, but I, d I do know from lads that have had injuries in the past with ACLs that, um, you know, it's a nine to 12 months thing and uh, my contract was up at the end of that season. So... I wasn't sure and to be honest I wasn't really bothered as you can see when I was coming off in the stretcher it was like right we, we could be in real trouble here this will be my part and you know act to, to the grip and I've tried to like rile the fans up as I'm going off in the stretcher so I did think maybe it would but you know that was dampened straight away the next day when I had the scan and somehow Touchwood you know got away without it being my ACL still a serious injury but you know one that I could come back from. And just on the nature, sorry, just the nature of the injury 
what, what exactly was it? Yeah. I don't know uh, media, uh, media. Oh. Yeah, I don't know the ins and outs of everything that went <laughs> on in there, but um, you know, not as bad as it could have been. And thankfully, with a good, good care of the Everett medical team, I got I got back to this level. You know. One question from Ed to end the live section. Ed John, just uh, you have the benefit of coming in here as uh, the familiarity with the players and the setup of the squad. <coughs> but how obviously you want to put your own um, mark on this on this camp. How how realistic is it? How much can you change this week in that sense? Um, just in terms of what, what you've, you've only offered. Yeah, look, it, it comes back to in the sense of understanding the group. Um, Obviously, the opposition you're going to face. We're just mixing things up a little bit with different uh, training routines, um, different ideas. Um, but lots of stuff was obviously in terms of preparation and uh, backroom stuff behind, uh, behind the scenes was was in a really good place too. You know what I mean? So um, it's just freshening things up for the players, just keeping it keeping it nice and bright, and uh, not not changing too much as well. Like in terms of. Um, Behind the scenes, because uh, lots of it, as I said, was in a good spot. Can I ask uh, both of you, uh, John? Your last cap was in 2018, and that followed after Wales return. Daryl um, and at that stage, Martin was kind of trying to do an overhaul, but maybe the, the young players weren't there for that to happen. How do you feel now, looking forward for the Irish football team compared to them in terms of what they had in store? Um, look, well, for me. It, you, you, as uh, you, Seamus just mentioned there in terms of obviously younger players coming through and Stephen uh, giving lots of lads uh, a chance um, to showcase their, their undoubted ability and the chance for them to grow as well at their clubs I think the confidence they get from coming and representing their country was huge for them and then they go back and kick on at their clubs um, and I think you're seeing that now with a lot of the lads too that they're getting more game time at their clubs and that's the key for me um, that they're getting that competition because when you come over to play an international game, be it a friendly or a qualifier, it's it's those kind of moments in the game that you have to find a way to get it falling in your favour more often than not. And I think that's what you'll see now with this group going forward, that they will do that because of their uh, experience they're gaining at the club levels, the know-how of getting over uh, the line in a big game to get three points and to get a win is uh, is growing and it's uh, it's going to happen very soon. Paul? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, listen, um, I've definitely seen the growth in, in the young players since, you know, they first come in to now, like, you know, and I think that, that that's important that you do see them, see them growing and see the confidence growing and you know, a couple of the lads even in training yesterday just to see the standards they have now and compared to maybe when they come in and that's all part of the growth of, of getting used to the group and that. So I think it stands as well going forward and you know it's these lads now need to obviously step up and get a real understanding of, you know, winning games and I know I've listen the manager's been to a few but I've only been to one tournament but ultimately that's that's where we all want to be. You know, that's that's got to be the aim and that's that's when you feel like you've really arrived at an international stage, and that's what we all crave for. So, the, the young lads now need to need to grow as the games come on, and really take it on, and really have a strong understanding of, of how important this always is to us, which they do, to be fair. Paul, please. Shams, just following on from that, then, in terms of the next permanent Ireland manager, if the FBI are announcing one next month, what sort of attributes, what sort of character, do the team need? And just secondly. In terms of your own international future, had you always intended absolutely to come back and play after the injury, or was there any conversations that you needed to have with your family to be maybe convinced to play on? Was it always your intention? Yeah, listen, on the, on the manager thing, we, you know, we just that's as players, we just come in, we want to do the best that we can for the for the country, and I've always been one that no matter what manager's there or not there, it's you've got that pride within yourself, and listen, I'm sure that that's going on behind the scenes, but these two games are all I'm focusing on now, and, and doing as well as we can for the manager at the minute, and um, seeing where that brings us, and um, yeah, listen, um, in terms of coming back, you know, it's hard to walk away from something that you really love, and um, you know, I have to be honest with myself as well. And if, if I've, I've always said, if I felt in training and stuff back at Everton that people were skipping past me in training and it didn't feel right, I would have to have a good hard look at myself. But you know, the games that I've played this year, I, I felt good. I've played against some good wingers again this season, and I felt good. I felt strong. So 
I'll, I'll be honest with myself when that time comes, but for as long as I can, I, I, won't, you know, I won't say no to, to my national team, absolutely not. Philip? Uh, well, it's kind of on my question as well. Um, it's great to see it looking so well as well. So at the moment, you're, are you available for selection for the Nations League as it stands, as we are now? Is that your intention? Listen, uh, I suppose when you get when you get to, Saturday, yeah, when you get when you get to my stage, honestly, and the last few years I've always just been, I know it's boring that one day at a time, just be the best I can tomorrow, and then carry on from that and see where I'm at. And if selected, of course, if things are going well for me physically and that, of course, I'd love to be part of it. But one day at a time and try and be the best I can be again today, and then and, and then again tomorrow and see where that brings me. I was watching yesterday in training and. Uh, I remember when you were one of the younger, one of the younger members of the squad, when you were the, the senior figure yesterday. You still had that enthusiasm, that that, 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 that that exuberance was coming out of you. You still enjoyed every minute of it. But was there a sense looking around that? Things are changing a little bit. Ah, yeah, there is that sense, but that's life, isn't it? Things change, and um, but great lads have come in, and I take great pride in, in trying to mentor some of them along the way, like the manager did to me, like Robbie did to me, like Damien Duff did to me, like Shay Given did to me, and things that have stuck with me forever. So I want to play a part in, in a small part in their international career as well. But yeah, the fire in the belly, let me tell you, is still burning, burning strong. Just finally, um, you have a lot of respect for the man beside you, and I know the FAI have a top with somebody at the moment, but do you feel that it goes well for John that there might be a role for him in the senior management team going forward? I'd, I'd, I'd love to hope so, and we'll get Saturday out of the way and, 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 and Tuesday then, and, and fingers crossed that we, we, we do well, which I'm sure that we will. And listen, having this man involved with Ireland is, is, is a privilege, and you know, for the people inside the camp, really understand how, how important it is to have someone like the manager involved. Dan? Uh, John, I just think the last time you were involved against Belgium as a player was the Euro. The manager then had to make a big change in the middle of the tournament to change his team. It was quite ruthless or sort of unsentimental. Are you prepared now for, as a manager to make those type of decisions? That, that now you're going to have to disappoint people this week, you're going to have to tell players you know, you're not picked, you're not involved, are you sort of ready for that, that next step? Yeah, you have to be. Um, look, it's obviously we have a squad of 25, um, so there's obviously going to be people disappointed, but that's what I spoke to the players about initially in terms of what you take to win matches at international level, to qualify for tournaments, it's a squad of players, um, and over the, t over the course of the two games, there will be changes. Obviously, you can have the six subs as well, but... Um, look, it'll be full focus on Belgium, picking a team that can obviously cause Belgium problems, but also be uh, be compact and tight as well, and be uh, be tough to play against. Uh, bring that mentality to get yourself a, a win in Dublin at the Aviva, and uh, bring that mentality back and in, in for the big games and no problem. Look, it, it'll be uh, there's still no decisions made on the team so there's still uh, that's what we spoke about as well in terms of intensity needed in training um, and then we wait and see what happens closer to Saturday. Seamus, can I just ask sort of on the team of what the lads are talking about there, it's a younger dressing room now, maybe half the squad is like 24 or under in that sort of age bracket, gives it a very different personality in the dressing room now compared to the first one we were walking uh, yeah, probably, yeah. Um, but uh, they're, they're, honestly, they're great lads. They're delighted, delighted to be here. And yeah, it's I think times have changed as well. Like, and, and the characters coming through are probably a little bit different now and maybe a little bit quieter. And you know, I still feel I have a duty to try and maybe help in that way and get lads speaking a bit more on and off the pitch and that. And um, it's different, but um, yeah, they're still the, the lads that are in there. You know, so happy to be here, so proud to be here, and um, yeah, different group. Uh, I think different times to the one I came in, and you know, I think as well as that, I come into you know quite a lot of senior players to 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 look after me, and um, there's only a few a few lads have left recently. Obviously, James retiring and stuff like that, and um, and uh, oh, you're speaking to me there, Ken. Uh, J J James retiring and that, so we've lost a couple of senior players, but the ones that are still there we have to look after these lads, and, and, and that's important. Mark? Yeah, uh, Seamus, um, can you give us any insight um, from your time as teammates that would have suggested that John was management material? Yeah, I, th mm -hmm. I think I, I think I t touched on it um, a, l a little bit uh, when I spoke about him. 
before, but just how he was the the calm nature, the calm nature, but the little bit of bite that when you, when we did see it, we did see it, and um, just how he was, especially with the younger players as well, like how he was, and you know, never moaned about things as well. So I think it, the managers got the right temperament for for the job, of course, and uh, I know from speaking to the the younger players that have come into the squad and um, from, from talking with the manager how, how how much they enjoyed their time with him with the underage setup and how welcome he made them feel as well and got involved with them and found out about them and things like that so I think he's got all the, the materials to be the Ireland manager and as I said we've got Saturday and, and Tuesday to, to think about now but you know personally speaking I'm delighted for, for the manager. Would there have been like a particular incident or anything that you um, yeah, um, no, not my memory's not the best, but um, not any that I can think of. But I think, I think the feeling that you get, you know, you might remember incidents of, of players that you played with in the past, but you'll always have that feeling that you you've had towards them, and just that feeling. I remember of them always just being around, being caring for the lads, but at the right time, you know, letting us know when it's time to train properly. And yeah, I always remember things like that for sure. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks.